You've just got here and I'm ready for you to go. I'm ready to leave. What is wrong with you? I called my husband and he's going to come get me. No, you... <laughs> Why are you doing this? I don't know. I think I'm just fussy. <laughs> she sat down and she goes, I can't wait for this to be over. And I was like, then let's cancel the podcast. If you're not having fun doing it anymore, then I'm not going to do it either. Because do you want to be honest with each other? No, I, said, I, I love said, this. I said, this morning, i just a little stressed out. And I'm like, oh. Once everything's recorded, I'm going to be like, oh, wow. So you can't wait till it's over either. That's bad. Oh. No, I don't think it's bad. I enjoy doing it with you. Well, then why can't we wait till it's over? Well, I've got a few things I'm living for it's right now. a big now. F you to everyone watching oh. that we're trying to rush through this. I'm not trying to rush through anything. It seems like you are. Okay, TBH, I was being low-key aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Experts would say I'm a little fussy. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a long fucking day. I went to light our background and I said, ooh, smell my candle. And what did you say? It's, I said, it smells yummy, but it also smells like the carcinogens that are going to give my baby's birth defects. And is this a you thing or a Joe thing? Joe doesn't like me being around candles that are whatever, parabens or something. And can you explain, though? I need to know like what I'm, what uh, it's, I'm doing. It, they, it's, I guess some people feel that there's certain chemicals in scented candles that can cause cancer oh yeah so joe doesn't like us to burn scented candles should we blow it out I mean, <laughs> it smells so delicious well you can get like certain candles that don't have those things in them and can i'm gonna need you to like tell me so i know i, can I don't know though i rely on joe heavily for to survive so in this life like it, joe just buys me specific candles that i'm allowed to burn you do it by smell you think no it's oh, not by smell that smells like it's a bad one <laughs> i mean just judging by it i doubt it's like a soy candle or whatever or like a beeswax candle i bet there's the paraben i don't even know if they're called i don't even know Isn't what they're called it a problematic to use bees things too and not in the same sense that it causes cancer. Okay. It just kills the bees. <laughs> Does it kill the bees? I don't know. I've I don't just think seen kill, some things I don't on think Instagram. it kills the bees because it's like you need the bees to be alive to function for your Is business. It, do bees die when we get their wax though? Because like alpacas, no. I used to have this thing. I know. Where do some... you think wax comes from? <laughs> <laughs> I guess the hive, right? Mm -hmm. But I've seen like even honey. So then why is honey a problem? It's like vegans do not like honey because well, it's because it comes it, from an animal, isn't it a bee? Yeah, and so it's all living things. But if it's but veganism also confuses me because it's like aren't plants living too? Well, the like thing where is, does the line? Like I know there's unethical fur, but there's also I like, think we're literally off to the dumbest start. <laughs> like honestly, but I just want to say like I have a fake alpaca over there, but now owning alpacas, I know it's no harm. Are you offended by your fake alpaca? No, because this is what I'm saying. I know there was no harm done to the alpaca to get the fur. Rather, it's necessary. The mm -hmm. alpacas rely on being sheared, yeah. or they will die because they'll get too hot in the blazing summer heat. Yeah, I don't think bees die when you get their honey or their wax. Be but I know that like. Honey is the problem, is what I've heard. I haven't looked into it. Who said that honey is the problem? I've seen some things on Instagram. Chris, can you I see the this? headlines. This sounds just so fucking crazy. I see the headlines and then I keep scrolling because I, I guess I'm a monster. I didn't care enough to look into it. <laughs> I've never seen the headline. I don't even know what you're talking about. Like there, be, there is a shortage of bees in the world. Honey is delicious though. I had a peanut. <laughs> I had a peanut butter and honey sandwich today before you guys arrived because so you guys were in the air and I wanted to order food, but I didn't want to assume what you guys wanted to eat for lunch. Yeah. So I was like, I need a little something to hold me over. And I looked in my pantry. There's nothing like always. Yeah. So I made myself a little peanut butter and honey. Mm. So good. And then the second you land, Lizzie's like, I go, okay, well, y you did some stupid girl thing and booked a flight that doesn't work with our schedule. Well, no, because we're doing a different schedule today. Because I'm staying the night. Ooh. Yeah. wonder what, what's going to happen. I, I know. <laughs> it's very tightly scheduled. <laughs> I could tell you exactly down to the minute mark what's going to happen, baby. And I think that's the thing is it's not just that we're like, normally we do the podcast, you do too, and you go. Yeah. But you want to do a vlog segment. She's turned it into her business venture. And then. Your guys is welcome. We got to make a new intro. Yeah. And so it's just, we, there's a lot to do. Mm -hmm. And we're both trying to be vloggy girls. So yeah, there's a lot to be done. What are you vlogging? Everything. Oh, I did a whole vlog miss yesterday because I had to get it in before you guys came. What did you? What and did so, you do? Or is it a secret? Because no. I also did a whole vlog miss yesterday. I baked something. <gasps> she baked. It's delectable. 
like it and it was beautiful it's like an instagram I'll, yeah i'll save i'll save the reveal right. anyway i asked these two what they want from jersey so mike <laughs> jersey mike's yeah I'm you're never... not going to come out of this as a good person, no, by the way. You guys are monsters. No, it's, no, you're a shockingly out of touch person. It should be illegal it, no, to order these two no, food. No, no. no First baby, of all, I'm baby, like, what do you no. guys want? So thoughtful, so caring, so nice, so sweet. <laughs> no, what do you guys say, want from he, Jersey Mike's? Yeah, he said, We're, I'm getting Jersey Mike's. What do you For want? For you from guys. There? And then uh, we turn I, your fucking we, phone. We over. tell him exactly. If you look what? at your phone one more time during this podcast, <laughs> this is between us and them, not whoever's messaging you. Turn it off. It's my husband. And what's the point? He's hey, on his way to get me. No, here's he the thing. needs the address. He's driving from California. Hey, a little bit of a derail, but you <laughs> a little bit always have your do not disturb on. Put it on when we're recording the podcast. It doesn't work for Joe. Oh yeah. He's my priority. Swerve. Swerve. Did you realize for the first time ever, honestly, I was trying to figure out how you even pull that maneuver mm -hmm. because my brother was like, oh, if you put like sleeping or something, it won't do it. And then I put it on and I didn't get that message I get that I get every time I message you. That, like, Oh, I set mine as like a little fuck you. How do you do that? I say, Suri, tell Rylan, fuck you. No, literally tell me how <laughs> I don't you know. Do I don't know. I just how do you make mode. a rude response come to me every <laughs> Wait, time what? I message you? It's like, Lizzie's too busy to talk. <laughs> and uh, so say that, but it's true. The other day, I really needed her attention for something work related and she wasn't answering. And so then I saw the iPhone gave me a thing like, cannot notify Lizzie. Notify anyways? Question mark. Oh, I just was Chris like, all the time. Boom. And it and then I got a response from you. Yeah, right I away. do that to Chris all the time, too. <laughs> He's you do that on... psycho shit, too. Yeah. He's a cameraman. He can't have his fucking phone going off at work. Oh, the where I, I the turn on the do not disturb? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I turn that on all the time. Yeah. I hate you guys. <laughs> Just put your phone on silent. <laughs> it's so rude when I text. It's so and it's rude. Like, this person cannot talk right now. And I'm like, Really quickly, I feel like Chris has an answer on the bees. I would like to circle back. I do have an answer on the bees. Okay, Way so to speak up for yourself. <laughs> I mean, I could hear him going. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Blowing the mic. <laughs> And then I, it's just like we just went crazy. So I wanted to bring it back to him. So thoughtful. <laughs> For those that think Lizzie's mean to Chris, look at this. <laughs> Circling back to information she wants. For her. <laughs> well, okay. First off, there are conflicting things, but the, as there are, usually are. But the first thing that popped up said beekeepers are not hurting bees intentionally <laughs> when they are harvesting honey. Almost everyone is doing it in the same way, that they leave enough honey. Because uh, I guess if you don't leave enough honey, they can starve or oh. can, they can be bad or harmful for the bees. But bee beekeepers tend or try to make sure there's enough honey for the bees and the hive. Consider it. Um, so, so what's the most problematic end of this? I mean, the other end was saying that bees aren't treated well, uh, much like any other factory animal. farmed animal. Because they're enclosed so that the beekeepers can collect the honey. And they're making them produce more honey than they would naturally. So they're and, not free range, basically. Uh, I don't know. I guess they're just treated badly. <laughs> and, and I try uh, to get the free range eggs. And so they're not consensually employed. And some and some of them are, are starving because they're not, they're not compensated. left. <laughs> <laughs> what well, this is like a huge world issue and we're like no it is a huge world issue you act like are it dying. wasn't you no, just said why is honey problematic <laughs> Lizzie you I'm concerned did I say that or did he say that I said that exactly my point I didn't say it I don't think we even know what we're fighting about <laughs> I'm, I'm having a great time okay back to Jersey Mike's <laughs> <laughs> oh my god hit me with it <laughs> this fucking idiot whoa <laughs> that's a huge name <laughs> chris and i both text him we want our sandwiches <laughs> <Mike's> <laughs> <laughs> can you finish <laughs> whoa <laughs> they say they want mike's way he goes what the fuck is that and like <laughs> Well, I know they ask you when you go to the I store. I've been once. <laughs> what? Why is this so funny? I don't get it. <laughs> That's the whole point of Jersey Mike's. <laughs> okay. Like everyone knows this. <laughs> no, but I said, no, listen, this is where I think you. I have to read the text messages because they're so funny. Okay, but I, in my defense, I said, 
It's fast. Uh, listen. <laughs> it hurts. I said on DoorDash, which sponsors our show. Thank you so much. <laughs> there isn't an option for Mike's way. <laughs> there, yes, he it goes, does. Yeah, Mike's way isn't an op. He, Mike's way isn't an option on Postmates. What does that even mean? I said, wow, that's insane. Just forget the Mike's way, I guess. <laughs> and then Chris sends what Mike's way is. And Chris, Rylan's like, you need to explain. So Chris sends what it means. <laughs> and then Rylan asks, both of you want everything in that? And I said, yeah, that's why we asked for it. <laughs> Well, the thing is, okay, so it doesn't, I, what I've discovered after Chris sent me the description of what is in Mike's way, because I was like, what's in Mike's way? And Lizzie's like, I don't know. Like, no, I said like oils and seasoning. <laughs> it's like, it's Mike's way. Like it's everything that you get at a Jersey Mike's subway. It's Mike's way. It's Jersey Mike's way. It's the way that he likes and his so candies. I was like, well, I have these options. So you need to tell me what it is. And Chris so thoughtfully set me up as Mike's way. And I did discover on the app, once you click on a sandwich, they automatically check off what is Mike's way. Mike's way. way. Oh, but good. how was I supposed Phew. to know that that was Mike's way? <laughs> oh my gosh. So funny. I'm in pain. It was such a nightmare. And there's nothing worse than like, <laughs> I was trying to like set up everything for the podcast, get everything ready to go. Lizzie's asking me what ingredients I have in my kitchen and I'm trying to order food and there's all these options for three sandwiches. And I'm like, if you guys just don't tell me what you want on your fucking sandwiches, <laughs> no one's going to eat. It was just wild when you were like, what's Mike's way? <laughs> You are ordering lunch next time. Okay, I'll pay for fine. it. But Do I just have mascara running down I my face? I hope so. God, that would be good. Sweet, sweet revenge. Let's talk about you flying with shit all over yourself. <laughs> the next text I sent was, I'm seriously dying of laughter from my center seat on this full-ass Southwest flight with just a little bit of shit on my knee. <laughs> so we've re we renamed our puppy Shitty Ass. Oh. Because he's got a shitty ass. <laughs> And I got to the airport today and realized there was just a little bit of shit on my knee. Oh, it's because those pugs have those exposed assholes. Yeah, it's because his asshole's exposed. So when he sits on your lap, if there's something left over, it's just... Well, I don't know how it got on my knee, but there was just a little I bit of shit on my knee. I think he probably sat on you while you were sitting on the couch. No, because I like left... It, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. He was also shitting all over the house while I left, so I had to pick up a bunch of shit. Also, so. any normal person would go to the bathroom and dab it with water, mm -hmm. get it off, and I don't then think dry they have paper towels at the Burbank airport. They I'd, just have those blowy things. I'd rather walk around with it a little wet on your... It doesn't look Listen, like you Listen, it was just a little bit of shit. Did you see that viral TikTok going around that was like somebody <laughs> hit the streets? I didn't watch it because I thought, I'll bring this to the podcast because I'm curious. And this is good for Chris to ask too. But the question is like, you know how those things are going viral? Like, how do you, what do you do to afford this car? What do you make? Oh, yeah. Here? So this person on the street was like, can girls pee with tampons in? And I was like, Go away. I don't want to see what their yeah. response is because I don't, I genuinely what do you don't think? know. What do you think? I mean, I'm thinking. Use all of your mind. Use all of it. <laughs> Turn it all on right now. Chris, what do you think? I actually don't know. What do you think? I think. What's, this feels like. Can you shit with a dick in your butt? No. A I little bit. Maybe a little no, bit. No, I can't. Maybe a little, a little bit. bit. I don't know. No. <laughs> I read, I hope they serve beer in hell, and I know for a fact you can shit with a dick in your butthole. If the dick's coming out of your butthole, I guess the shit could come with the dick, but not with, <laughs> the shit couldn't come out with, sorry if you're eating. But, but oh. I don't yeah. know. I also just, because The I answer is yes, you can pee with a tampon in. So are they different holes? I've been told they are. So you don't even really know. I'm unclear on the whole. I'm on, on the way you just scolded me game. like a mom. <laughs> Chris, can you pull that up? I'm Apparently sure if you there's search two it, or three holes. I know, but the P is different than yeah. The, the mom. P comes out of the urethra. Uh, yes, it's absolutely possible to pee with a tampon in. Your... I knew that. I told you well, that. No, I tell me this as a woman. All the time. As a woman, when as you a pull, woman. when you pull your tampon out, yeah. is there pee on it if you've peed? Like, is it? It's, I think it depends if you get it on the string. Well, no, I'm talking about the the actual tampon. You would no. be able to tell if it was wet, like if it absorbed, because it absorbs the, the period. No. So it must be a different hole. It's absolutely a different hole. Your, then your cl urine, case closed. Your urine comes out of your urethra, urethra and your menstrual blood comes from the vagina. So it's a different hole. So the vagina itself is literally a hole? You're plugging the... That I don't know. How would Can you the, Google is the vagina yes. just the hole? So yes. how would guys not mistake your pee hole for your vagina hole? Because it's very different. <laughs> you don't even know. I know that one is, is like a, a tiny. You have a urethra. Vaginas are very confusing. 
Have you ever tried to stick something in your urethra? If I did, I wouldn't be able to pee out of it. But have you, like, it's a, it's a that, tiny hole. That's a thing, though. Have you heard of sounding? No. Where there's like a little metal rod you. that guys shove in their penises. That makes me sick and I don't even have a dick. That's a thing. I want to barf. Like, honestly, that's making me sick. It, I it literally might me. barf. <laughs> You're going to have to stop. It's a thing. And like, it's like, why isn't that in Saw? You know what I mean? <laughs> If you want to live, if you want to truly appreciate the life you have, you will take this metal rod and shove it into your pee hole. Uh, so there are two openings in the vulva, the vaginal opening and the opening to the urethra. That's what it says. So the vulva is the stuff around the vagina, which is the hole? The re- urethral opening is the tiny hole that you pee out of located just below your clitoris. The vaginal opening is right below your urethral opening. And it's all opening. encased in the vulva? So I how, guess. My okay. question, though, is how I think does... we just figured out pussies. <laughs> <laughs> the dick. <laughs> 32 the... years, guys. <laughs> no, but I am curious. Like, How does the tampon not mistakenly go up the pee hole because and not the vagina Because there's hole? a difference in hole size. Okay, so when you're pushing something up, it it's just like, goes up the bigger If you think about one. it, yeah, a penis goes in a vagina. It doesn't go into your urethra. Well, you and I both I have your urethras, and we both got sick at the thought of shoving a metal rod in one. Okay. So that means it's a tiny hole, So right? if you were to really inspect, you could find where you... Okay, I mean, case closed if you pee and your tampon doesn't have pee on it. Right. Okay. It's all case closed. There's multiple holes. We're not chickens. You barely knew. I know now. <sighs> I cracked the case. Pussy solved. Okay, do you want to talk about the best day of your life or what? Oh my God. Do I want to talk about the best day of my life? I've been dying to see you to talk about this. I mean, you called me, right? I know, but you didn't care. I mean, I cared more than the other person you were talking to. That's not true. They cared more than you. Really? Yes. They know it's a big deal for me. So multiple times in my life, I have been out in the wilderness, the wilds of Los Angeles, specifically Burbank and Sherman Oaks, Mm -hmm. a valley girl, if you will. And one time I was smoking a cigarette in a gutter and a Tesla drove by and it had Jojo Siwa's face all over it. And I went, <gasps> that was Jojo Siwa. Mute him. Mute him. <laughs> He's in the middle of my story. Mute him. At Thank least you. it wasn't a yawn. It's about to be. Look at him. <laughs> no, it was adjusting. <laughs> so then I'm on the phone with my baby mama, Haley, and her mom's there. And I'm on speakerphone and there's a fucking Lamborghini in front of me, a white Lamborghini with two Toy Story characters at the back of it. And I go, I bet that's Jojo Siwa. And then I went. I bet that's Jojo Siwa. <laughs> and it was fucking Jojo Siwa. I looked in the mirrors and then I was like, should I follow her? But she was faster than me because I'm in a Prius and she was in a Lamborghini. You couldn't speed up and at least wave? Not the way a Lamborghini does with a Prius. Was she going that fast? Yeah, I ran a yellow light. That bitch is reckless. <laughs> <laughs> Low key, like really though. And she literally called me and was, I thought she could have floated into a different atmosphere with excitement. It was sick. I love Jojo. The fact that I keep being around Jojo Siwa and Josh Peck means that they must come onto the show. I mean, that would be great. What are the odds? What are the odds? What are the odds? Honestly, maybe not big. I don't think they're that big. Of them coming on. I don't understand what we're talking about because statistics aren't really my thing. So the second we started getting too deep in the odds, I was very confused. I'm going to be real with you. (laughs) So I don't really know what the odds are, but it feels like they're slim. Have either of you reached out to them? Slim is not good. That means like they won't come on. Oh, (laughs) sad. For how smart you are, <laughs> I'm not I'm a really statistics girl. Some I'm a creative type. I can't be good at everything. I can't sing. I don't bowl, and I don't do statistics. Everything else, I'm great at. And what would you say to JoJo had you been at the same stoplight? Would have you been nothing? One of those girls I would have been scared. Like, Roll down your no, window. I, I get instantly terrified. If it's someone I love, I'm I like shut down. I'm like. <laughs> you did send me that TikTok of that Megan Trainer song that she's got a Gucci on. Yeah. And I was like, wow, the amount of effort JoJo put into that TikTok where she's like $25,000 worth of effort, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Because she had all the designer clothes on that Dude, that woman she's thinks about. fucking figured it out. And she's like 19. I would love to have JoJo on the, she's on the show. She's had it figured out since she was like eight. What's that like, JoJo? <laughs> <laughs> like, I just discovered what vaginas are all about. Like, it seems like you've been known. And I want to know how you knew. <laughs> okay she's also got a cruise that i'm like mm, do i go on it or what? like, like yeah. she's going to be the grand marshal of her cruise no like xomg pop is the grand marshal of the cruise and it's like i want to go but i also feel like as an adult woman without a child that. it's kind of sketch for me to go and i'm not trying to get is on a she watch gonna list. make an appearance like will of she fly she's her helicopter make... in and she has a helicopter it? i don't know uh, <laughs> why wouldn't she i mean right. she's everywhere with her face all over it fuck <laughs> 
I love her. Why did she put Anyways, Toy Story characters on her Lamborghini? I think she's like sponsored by Disney. She goes to Disney all the time. Her girlfriend Avery asked her to be her girlfriend at Disney. This is getting too deep. Is it? It's not that deep. <laughs> I Yeah. Okay. It's, okay. This holiday season, the best deal in wireless can only be found at Mint Mobile. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three-month plan, you'll get another three months for free. And as the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order and activate from home with eSIM while saving tons on phone plans starting at just $15 a month. I've been using Mint Mobile for long before this holiday deal, and I just have to say, it's the perfect time to switch. Not only am I saving tons of money from my previous family plan, but the service oh, is so much better. By going online only with eSIM, Mint Mobile eliminates the traditional costs of retail and passes those savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily and effortlessly with eSIM. Or if you need a new device for a limited time, you can get six months of free service when you buy a select device and plan. So switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. For a limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months for free by going to mintmobile.com slash sip. That's mintmobile.com slash sip. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash sip. Before you book any brunch, you pour over lists and lists of reviews, so why not do the same when you're booking a doctor's appointment? With ZocDoc, you can see real, verified patient reviews to help you find the right doctor in your network and in your neighborhood. After all, finding the right doctor is just as, if not more important, than finding the right plate of Eggs Benedict. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. On ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun, whether you're trying to straighten your teeth, fix an achy back, get that mold checked out, or anything else, ZocDoc has you covered. ZocDoc's mobile app is as easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting delivery to your house. Search, find, and book doctors with a few taps. I love that you can read real, verified patient reviews from real people who made real appointments. Now, when you walk into the doctor's office, you're all set to see someone in your network who gets you. Go to ZocDoc.com to find the doctor that is right for you and book an appointment in person or remotely that works for your schedule. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc, and I happen to be one of them. It's my go to whenever I need to find or book a quality doctor, especially since I've moved from California to Colorado. All the doctors I previously used are no longer in my area. So ZocDoc has come in so handy in order to find the doctors that I need. So go to ZocDoc.com slash the sip and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours and that's ZocDoc.com slash the sip. ZocDoc.com slash the sip. Anyways, what? so later that day, there was a wrap party for this project I was working on mm -hmm. and we were bowling in Pasadena because it's a cheap company. No offense guys, but honestly, <laughs> none of us wow. live in Pasadena. That was fucking wild. <laughs> that was really crazy of you to have everyone fucking fly, drive out to fucking Pasadena <laughs> Take for bowling to Pasadena. for a night of bowling. Like motherfucker, you couldn't find something in the Valley. Pins in Studio City can't Honest be that expensive. Honest to God. No, it can't. What the fuck was that? Anyways, we drive out to Pasadena. I'm like, whatever, we're here. Great. <laughs> And I'm minding my own business, sucking ass at bowling, having a great fucking time. Do you go bowl with the curbs up? I asked for them and they all laughed at me and said that they usually only do that for children. And I said, okay, and can I please have them? And okay. they wouldn't give them to me. But I do have a method where it's like if I jump a little bit and I throw it from between my legs with both hands like this, oh, it's um, it goes good. Like, I'm not good, and it hurts my whole body, <laughs> but it, it it's, I'm knocking shit down. Oh, I got multiple shit. strikes. I got multiple no. strikes. Yes, I swear to God. Wow. It's embarrassing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the point of your story, please. I'm minding my own business, throwing the bowling ball from between my legs with both hands, hopping on one foot, getting strikes, and looking over my shoulder, I see not... Wait. You don't even know. I know. I just saw? blanked. No, I blanked. I blanked. <laughs> <laughs> this is really interesting. Chill out, chill out. I'm exhausted. I'm I exhausted. Know. Shush. I don't know. Haley Joel Osment. The love of my life. Oh. The love of my life. Haley don't Joel Osment. Do you know him? Not personally, but kind of. I thought you've had like awkward encounters no, with him. No, I have. And they're called playdates. <laughs> so when I was a young warthog, I, I had told my, all these stories. Uh, well, whatever. I told it to Haley that night okay. too. Well, you told you remind you refreshed him. No, I was looking at him. I was, I was like, and I was being Lizzie. So like around my like coworkers, I was like, Haley Joel Osment's here. I know him. I'm probably not going to say hi, like, because <laughs> I'm crazy. And then my friend Maya was like, Oh, I'll go 
don't tell him. I was like, Maya, you're drunk. Don't do that. And she stops him. And I see her stopping him because it's one of those things where it's like he's walking and he's got a baseball cap on and you can tell he's trying to be like incognito guy. And I'm I already have hives. You know what I mean? I had hives the second he walked in because I'm in love with him. And he comes by and he's like got his head down and my Maya grabs him. Hayley! Hayley! Oh, and he like stops. Nothing worse than nothing that. Nothing worse than that. Grabbing. Hands on. Grabbing him. And he goes, ah, she's like, no, my friend knows you. Lizzie, do you know her? <laughs> and he's like, I guess she maybe looks familiar. And I'm like, I don't look familiar. And then you had to start name dropping. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember 20 years ago when I was at Whoa. so-and-so's famous house. <laughs> What? Was it 20 years ago? I don't know. It was 20 years ago. I did say that. He remembered the house. Well, of course he would. Yeah. Hi, Haley. <laughs> Come on the pod, buddy. He missed opportunity to not. And ask Joe for was that. behind me and he's like, I'm just going to let you have this moment. <laughs> <laughs> and I like told him, I was like, just so you know, like, I was obsessed with you. I had your picture all over my room. I bought myself a fake engagement ring and I had your headshot framed by my bed. So, like, that play date was a really fucking big deal to me. And he's mm-hmm. like, cool. So, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> I was like, I'm at a rap party. He's like, what's the show? And I was like, it's not really a show. (laughs) You're like, we're in Pasadena, Haley. I was like, we're in Pasadena, Haley. Obviously, this isn't a real fucking show. This is a shitty rap party. (laughs) Obviously, this isn't a studio gig. We're in Pasadena. I mean, look at us, Haley. Do any of us look like we're doing well? No. Wow, that's mean on Haley's behalf. No, why would it be mean? He wasn't part of our party. He was there with his friend he having was a in good Pasadena. night. I think he lives there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pasadena is fucking beautiful. It is nice. It's yeah, very nice, it's, and it's rich. It's it's yeah. I don't know why anyone would go that way though. I'd rather go towards like the ocean in Calabasas. Yeah, whatever. Is, Calabasas is hella inland. Uh, though. Pasadena's a lot cheaper. Oh, it is. Oh. Yeah, I didn't know that. Honey, what are you doing? Honey's so cute. Okay, she looks thinner. So do you want to talk about some more of your adventures in Los Angeles? Like, what do you mean? Let's make a deal. Ugh. I mean, you can bring this up because we were on the phone when it happened, if you want to. Well, okay. So, well, no, you you got to you gotta bring us in on the journey. So when I called Ryland, this is so sweet, honey bunny. So when I called Ryland to tell him about JoJo Siwa, I started checking my emails also because I was done with my story and he started talking and it's like, what are we going to talk about now? So I started ignoring his, introdu- his part of the conversation and reading my emails and I got a fucking email from the casting director of... Uh, let's make a deal let's make a deal it's sad that I know your story more than you do Honey, and because I don't know if you guys know this about me but I was on an episode of let's make a deal because I was very poor send and a link I don't know how to find it <laughs> honey this has got to stop honey you gotta, pick a, you gotta pick a lap girl come yeah, sit is it mine come sit mama so like let, I don't know if you guys know this but it is like one of the most demoralizing things to be a fucking part of because they take you and put you in a like garage in like is it called Sun City? What's that horrible part of the Valley that's like not safe? <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know if we should alienate more. Parts I don't know of Los what Angeles it's called, but there's live. a part of Los Angeles that's like not safe, <laughs> and like that's where they film this shit. They take you, they make you audition twice. Who's have- the host? Wayne Brady. Okay. They make you audition twice for this show. Once at a casting place in Burbank, and then when you get to this like DMV garage or whatever, you have to dress up as something stupid. So you already feel like a fucking asshole. Do they pay you enough to audition twice? They don't pay you at all. <gasps> what? They don't pay you at all. You what? go. I was so broke that I had a friend drive me to both auditions in and then hopes to- that you'd win. Yes. How did you know you? What are the odds of getting chosen? How Very many, slim. Because oh. the audience is what? 200? 200 people. And how many people play? And I'm there. I don't like maybe seven or eight. And I'm there in a fucking unicorn onesie. By the grace of God, I saw my friend Evan there. I was like, Evan, thank God. Like, I'm not alone. What was Evan he fucking doing won a kitchen set. He was doing, we're both broke. We were both doing broke people things, trying to get money in Los Angeles. You know, you have to pay taxes on whatever you win. He learned that the hard way. <laughs> so I was there. He got to actually play. I didn't get to fucking play. They lock you in that garage garage for fucking six hours then they make you leave your phone somewhere and then they put you on a bus move you away from your phone to another stage where they sell you like like those very small costco packs of chips mm. and coffee for like 75 dollars. they charge they charge you, you they for charge the you for the crafty this seems like a ponzi scheme it's insane like, they make you go to two castings yeah you show up and then they charge you for food uh-huh. it's like how are they really making their money us 
we're paying for all of it emotionally and financially. And so I'm sitting in the back row. Like they're like, the more you dance and the more you look into it, the more likely you're going to get selected. And I'm in my stupid fucking unicorn you're thing. You're so loud. And I'm You've starving. got a great chance. Oh my God. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, like dancing alone in my fucking onesie. They wouldn't let me and Evan sit near each other either, which was really sad. So I'm just like alone there. And there's like groups of people who come with like friends from out of town and they're living their best lives. But it's like for us LA locals who were there because we're fucking hungry. It's sad. <laughs> it's fucking sad. And then at the end, they come up to me and they go, do you want to try and make $250? And I was like, that's why the fuck I'm here, Wayne Brady. <laughs> and he's like, if you can chew this piece of mint gum that had tiny mint spores in it, it's literally like a strip of mint spore gum. Mm -hmm. He's like, if you can chew this and blow a bubble in 20 seconds, I'll give you 250 bucks. And I was like, you know, that's is this for his own entertainment or is this funded by like, the game? It felt like fucking cruel and unusual okay. <laughs> because there's no fucking way you can do that. And they gave me mint spore so they knew I couldn't succeed. And no matter what, I'm going to fucking try my hardest. <laughs> I was like a fucking unicorn because I need that money. I needed that money, Wayne. I fucking needed that money, Wayne. And I didn't do it, so I didn't get the money. Oh. And then I just went home. And then you have to get on a fucking bus. They take you back to the garage. You have to wait in line to get your shit. And then you have to go home. So very demoralizing. Demoralizing. And then they emailed me and asked if I wanted to come on the show again. And here's the deal. Fuck you. I emailed her back. I was like, I'm triggered by this email. Please take me off your mailing list. <laughs> Did she reply? No. <laughs> You're like, I will not go through that torturous I will not experience go that again. again. And also, like, fuck you, Wayne Brady. <laughs> well, that reminded me. I saw a clip uh, going around. Should we around. break down? We have one minute. Oh. Wow. Sorry, we have me. one minute. No, let's break down. Okay. <laughs> See ya. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So that reminded me of, I saw a clip going around of Meghan Markle's podcast. I've never actually listened to the podcast, but I heard this clip where she was talking about her experience on a game show because mm -hmm. she was one of the briefcase girls on, I think it was Deal or No Deal. Mm -hmm. I thought it was Let's Make a Deal, but then... It's hard to say what the titles are, uh, honestly. They're, yeah. I don't know. It's very confusing. Yeah, and I just know my host <clears throat> is Wayne Brady. The clip from her podcast is is crazy it's as though i don't know if her entire podcast is like this but an audio but book as though she's reading her own audio book like her and 500 other people sat in a room to script an hour of content for her to read as though it's her audiobook. should we make chris do that for our <laughs> podcast <laughs> can you imagine if we tried to read our podcast but it was so neither of us can like, read <laughs> and then in that moment <sighs> i knew and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but basically just talking about I love how that she, she was... felt demoralized even though she was paid as fuck to go be a model. I was yes. hired because I have exceptional beauty. <laughs> and then I was objectified for that beauty for the job that I applied for as a beautiful person. So that's the story. And I just can't help but thinking, ah, am I nothing but too beautiful? <laughs> I don't left know. an icky stuff filling in my stomach. She said icky. I s s felt something like that because it's we say shitty ass now. And so Megan. she what? Oh, <laughs> and so she had to leave the show because it gave her a bad vibe. And God, I just could you thought, imagine being so rich that you can just leave a job because it gives you a bad vibe? Well, she felt demoralized, which I guess is <laughs> I get it, girl. <laughs> <laughs> like, call me Lizzie if your Wayne it. Brady offers you $250 to blow a bubble in 20 seconds <laughs> hey Megan at least you were well lit probably had free craft service <laughs> yeah. got dressed beautifully got to have your phone and got paid I'm sure very handsomely and I bet you weren't in the shitty part of the valley that's not safe <laughs> I bet she was on a studio lot I'm pretty sure she was on what's it called Fairfax I bet she had a parking spot bitch <laughs> get the fuck out of here i can't stand her i can't stand her i don't care honestly this is the one that this is it this is the one that ends I them all i just can't with her fucking like just her cadence and the way that she reads it it's like girl i might listen to her podcast if it was I like made it to the top echelon of performers a dream which mo a lot of people have and few ever get to realize and when i realized i had achieved that dream i thought ew <laughs> well, another one of the co-hosts came out and was, or not co-hosts, of the briefcase girls came out and said, it was a career starter for me. I never felt objectified by the job. I was treated wonderfully and I loved it. So I guess it was through her perspective, which isn't wrong. Like she's right. definitely allowed to feel that way. Yeah. But it's just like, I don't know. Her in general is just like, it's it, a lot. I, I have to hit my head against the wall a couple of times. I mean, I would, if, if if we were to give Meghan Markle some advice, though. Advice, though. <laughs> That's would, how this segment started, originated. We were going to just give celebrities advice. Unsolicited advice. Unsolicited advice. So let's do that. So, Megan, here's some <laughs> advice, though. 
I think you need to wake up in the morning and make a fucking gratitude list and start thanking God for every single thing you have in this big, beautiful life, including your fucking compound in Montecito. It's a lot, bitch. It's a fucking lot. Thank you, God, for these blessings you have bestowed upon and me your contract with and my beautiful that family. <laughs> yeah, and Spotify didn't even fire you. Get out of here. I'm sick of it. Enough is enough. Do you think anyone's listening? I'm not trying to be mean. I know no. she's highlighting good things. Well, I was talking about Kim Kardashian's as well. She's always like promoting it. Like, my new podcast. I'm like, oh. Kim has a podcast? She talks about, yeah. I mean, it's nice. It's like she's doing good for the world. She's talking about the reform work that she does. Is uh, that what it's called? Reform? I mean, whatever. Where reform. she helps people get out of prison. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Whoa. Good stories. No, Kim's a badass, and everyone's like, fuck her. But it's how about those pictures of her in court? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the illusion, the, wait, because there's no cameras in this court, so the only like, okay, backstory. Back yeah, Black China sued all the sisters except for Courtney Old news. and Chris because she thought that they cost them a job. Her cost her, her a job. Her reality show. Yeah, on e. but it's really like you lost the reality show on E about your relationship when you lost your relationship. Yeah, what's the show if they're broken up? Exactly. I guess their life's individually could be. And spicy. it seemed like it was toxic as fuck. Oh yeah. Uh, more on that in a second. <laughs> I want to talk about toxic reality TV shows in like five seconds, but the all the images that were released from court that they showed on the Kardashians, the like the mm -hmm. recent episode. The girls look fucking crazy, and it feels like the whoever was in court doing those sketches was like, the "Fuck these girls! Like, they're gonna look like shit in this record." And the like, reason I brought it up is because in the picture that I saw, Kim is like looking like her lawyer self. She like has her pin to her notepad, and she's yeah. like, hmm. that's, 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 "That is Kim." Kim's like, "I have to go now, guys, because I'm gonna go for closing statements." Like, what a unique opportunity I have to just go sit in on a court hearing where I'm being sued for a hundred million dollars. Crazy. <laughs> My life is crazy. <laughs> For such a big, elaborate show, don't you feel like nothing actually ever happens? No, I always think about that, too. I'm like, wow, they must be so busy, but it's like a lot of wheel spinning and like not all, you know what I mean? That's like, my problem is there's so many like high highs. Like, and even when Kim's excited, like she gets a huge Balenciaga campaign. Yeah. She's like, pinch me. I can't even believe it's happening. <laughs> and it's like, I feel nothing because... I heard her wanting that Ripley's dress. I told my mom, like, I will marry you. And it's like, Kim, that has no weight by your standards. Because you will marry a lot of anyone. But also, it's like... And also, who fucking cares? She's like, I'm doing all of this for 10 minutes of my life. And I'm like why <laughs> like why and i love kim like i love, I love them how all. ridiculous she is i just I, I, as a overall review of their reality show i'm just saying for so many huge things happening in their life that only such a famous person would get to experience mm -hmm. in this lifetime i don't feel like i'm on the ride with them and i don't right. know if that's how they relay it or if it's not edited in a way like i feel more connected to a lot of youtubers i watch that i'm like going on an emotional journey with this person yeah. that i don't don't feel with the Kardashians. No, I mean I feel it with Chloe sometimes. I feel like Chloe's was the realist. I get yes, I was like that for a long time, but at a certain point I just started thinking like I understand when you're in a moment in your life where like it's sad and it's yeah. not here, but it's like at some certain point instead of just talking about it all the time, just opt out. Just like opt she didn't out. want to go to her premiere. Don't go. But then she like talked about it the whole time and I'm like just don't like, you don't have to. You have enough money to stay in that house in Calabasas. Yeah. Just stay there. Run your clothing line. It's a great clothing yeah. line. The other thing that I think that people don't really understand is, like, because you've been to, like, award shows. And, like, we've been in certain rooms that, like, a lot of people don't have access to. And, and like, around, like, huge money. Like, crazy big money. I'm not, You more than me. I've been in some very unique, rich experience situations yeah. that don't make Those sense Brentwood to me. Those Brentwood mom rooms. Those Brentwood mom rooms are fucking crazy. Because they're all Reese Wither... No, I mean, it's not Reese Witherspoon <laughs> no, specifically, but, like, they but they're might all, as well be Reese all of Like, Reese I've been Witherspoon in houses status. where they've got Picasso paintings up and they're like, you're not allowed to take pictures in here because we don't want people to know we have Picasso paintings <laughs> up because we don't want to be robbed. Like, crazy fucking Brentwood's situations. Brentwood's nuts. When I used to work there and I would see how the teenagers it's crazy. live their life, yeah. I would my mind almost exploded because I couldn't comprehend like at the pinnacle of my success living how these teenagers live. Honestly, it's nuts. When you think about the bills that they rack up, it's like, damn girl, like that's what I make in a year. <laughs> that's just what I make in a year. But that all that I'm saying all of this to be like on the other side of it, like as an outsider inside of it, it's not that cool. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, yeah, it's very comfortable. 
but there's it's like it's not that different do you know what i'm saying like mm. it's just this item is more expensive but it's very similar to this item that's not that expensive i think the biggest difference with the financial element is the security if something goes wrong or being a, yeah. those sorts of yeah. things are a different level i'm talking about the superficial objects it's right like, and the it, emotional state yeah. of life yeah. and how you go through day-to-day -day feeling waking yeah. up existing yeah right. i'm talking about ba just basic object bullshit mm -hmm. it's not different you know no. what i mean and it's like and the more i get into these like higher up professional rooms even like you have this thing in your mind that says like oh i'm not as good as so and so but then you sit in on so and so's meeting and you're like oh no i am well because you're the arguably... difference between me and so and so is a hundred million dollars that's the difference and that you might be well that's not fair to say for everyone but i think the person the underdog might be working harder at right, that point right and put and crossing every detail yeah uh, as opposed to somebody who's very successful and can kind of let yeah. things slide but um, i i do think that like the veil of the mystery of it all is like the mystery is that there is no mystery yeah and i just felt like even watching the selena gomez documentary i just felt sad i was like i i am glad that she could show such a candid side of herself yeah but I just wanted some like glimmer of hope for her. Like right. I, it was, it was over the span of six years. And I was like, you, there's no moment where she's like giddy excited about anything. Yeah. And I'm like, if you're not, like I understand the music is a reflection of what you're going through and maybe it's not fun to promote that sort of music but it's like and she understands like she has this purpose of like a platform but I just feel like at some point if you're not getting enjoyment out of it or you're not enjoying the process or the things that come along with the process stop doing just it. opt out for a while yeah just stop like yeah. if, it, if the whole process makes you miserable don't stop and find something it. that makes you giddy and smile like don't feel the weight of your world of the world on your shoulders yeah. to do something Thing or be an example for someone if that makes you miserable yeah i think that's almost as awful as powering through being unhappy and i, I mean who knows what they left in what they didn't right. i'm sure there's moments of her life that are pure joy mm -hmm. but i just felt like gosh i wish she could find something that really does bring her happiness yeah and maybe the philanthropy work did do that for her and maybe she'll go I think further she, into she it, seemed but. authentically proud of her philanthropy work and the school that she started and all of that stuff yeah. and i think that's huge but i just i loved like her going back to her her middle school too and talking to those kids and mm. i love the message that she imparted to them of you're the only one who can tell you no but it feels like a, to me it felt like it was not a burden to her but like not exciting like she's i still felt the weight of her like sadness I, through all of it yeah i think that i think that there's different i see i agree with what you're saying i'm not and saying I think she that wasn't there's, gracious or happy to no 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 i know that right but i'm saying i think that in that moment because i could hear her voice quivering mm -hmm. in the school when she's like you're the only person who can tell you no but i think more than anything for her that's the juxtaposition of where she came from and where she is right and that the quiver in her voice is oh my God, like, look how far I've come. Mm -hmm. Like, you're the only one who can tell you no. And just like to tap into that just a tiny little bit, like, I definitely agree with that. Because even like what I was just saying, we're like the difference between me and that guy is $100 million, but we're doing the same thing. Right. Like, I don't have a lot. I don't come from a lot. And I'm able to do exactly the same fucking thing. And I was trying to tell you this last night, but there's like, if you want something bad enough, this is your goal, but you're starting over here. So all you have to do is take apart all the pieces that make your goal and realize what the first step you have to take is after you reverse engineer all of it and then just take one fucking step at a time yeah. to get to your goal. Yeah. That's all it is. You don't go from start to finish. You take one step at a time and everything in between is how you get there. Yeah. And if that goal makes you miserable once you're there, it's okay to reevaluate exactly. as well. Yeah. And, and if you don't like the steps you have to take, probably not the right goal for you. Yeah. And Bert, wrapping it around to the Selena Gomez thing again, I thought it was incredible how vulnerable she was. And I appreciate what she showed to the world. I just on a personal note, hope she finds genuine happiness in this life. Same. You know? Yeah. Um, I think there was something else you put on about, oh, that she named her kidney or after someone. Oh, yeah. Fred Armisen. Fred oh. Armisen. I always say his name really fast because I don't know how I actually say it. I, I don't know who that is. You don't know who that is? Of course then not. Then who cares? <laughs> well, did you have sentiment to say about it? I think it's a funny thing. I did. Well. She's like, I hope he finds out about that. <laughs> and I think that's funny. He's a celebrity. He's a comic. Don't he was on she... SNL. Portlandia. Uh, I'll just close my mouth. Say it. I was going to say, don't you think she should name it after Francia who gave it to her? Wow. He went there. I'm just saying. <laughs> 
I mean, Francine and Fred are close. <laughs> and who? Oh, they are? No. Oh. I meant name-wise. They both start with F. Oh. <laughs> I actually, I literally refuse to dive into that drama and even see what it's about. Well, and you never know the arc of a friendship and yeah. what happened there, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, I honestly, I doubt anything happened there. But I didn't click on any of it. There must have been something because she felt salty enough to make a comment about it. What did she say? Well, Selena was doing press somewhere and mentioned that she doesn't fit in with the Hollywood. Well, that's in her documentary. She says her only Hollywood friend is Taylor Taylor Swift. Swift. Yeah. And then she Francia commented on that post somewhere and said, like, she made a comment. I forgot what the actual statement was, but she was like weird or awkward or something. She made mm-hmm. a statement on it. Cause it's like, well, we are friends. We've always been friends. I mean, I don't know if they're friends right now. Mm-hmm. And I gave you a kidney mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I would feel maybe I don't know what their falling out was like or what it was over. I'm sure Selena feels justified. I'm sure Francia feels justified. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like that might just be like a joke. Like also when Selena made that statement, I don't think so. Cause then Selena came back out and just said like, sorry, sorry I, I didn't, didn't mention, mention everybody I've ever known. Yeah. Right. Okay. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I think, you know, to some degree she's in a documentary about music kind of right. So she might be thinking like the only person in the music industry that I'm friends with is Taylor Swift. Yeah. Francia I mean, is not in the music industry. Okay. She's an actress. And quite frankly, like, a sense, you know, make it or break it. I feel like I haven't heard a peep out of that bitch. She's in Hillary Duff's show. Yeah, but that was like this year. Yeah. So this. No, she's job- always on some show. She is? I'm mm-hmm. oh, good for her. She's always consistently working on something. <laughs> she was the bad girl on Make It or Break It, but she's not the one that got pregnant. We only have five minutes. Oh, I'm no. very wrong. Ignore me. Oh, oh really? I was, was going like, to say, wow, it's like we did cocaine fun. and we're just smoking cigarettes and talking about kindergarten. <laughs> I'm so, my brain. I'm sorry. You know, I love DoorDash and I know a lot of you have back to back meetings, errands to run and chores to take care of. And the secret to clearing everything on your to do list is a little help from DoorDash. You can get dinner, household essentials and everything on your grocery list delivered and in under an hour. Every time you place an order for pickup or delivery, you're setting off a chain reaction that helps give back to the people who make your neighborhood unique. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go to's or choose from your national favorite restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle and Eat even Cheesecake Factory. From the stores and restaurants to the dashers driving around, each purchase provides a new opportunity for everyone involved because with DoorDash, there's a neighborhood of good in every order. You already know I'm using DoorDash three to four times a week if that's for lunch or if I forgot something at the store. It is the best thing that exists today. So for a limited time, our listeners can get 50% off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app and enter code SIP22. That's 50% off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code SIP22. Don't forget that's code SIP22 for 50% off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Kylie has 16,000, 1,600 unread texts. Yeah. How do you know that? They're all me. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, they just said that in, the, in an episode of the Kardashians. And I just think that's fucking crazy, bitch. Wow. Delete them. Don't read them. Get a new number. Well, if I understand in the sense of Kylie is of such use to a lot of people that if you have your... She use? Is of use to people. Oh, okay. Heard, if you have Kylie Jenner's number and you need a favor, you're probably going to take your shot. Shoot your shot. And so I feel like with DMs, I can relate in a certain way. Not that anyone has anything to gain from me, but I don't, the pressure of opening DMs is too much for me that I just leave them unread. Mm-hmm. And maybe she feels subconsciously by not reading them, she's not being as like, well, Available. I didn't read it. So right. I'm not like being as rude, not replying, especially when I think that it might be you asking me for something. Right. Or she just has crazy group chats that are blown it's up that all she's me. ignoring. It's just all me. It's every thought I've ever had. <laughs> Okay, I didn't see this, but I saw it going viral everywhere. Did you watch the of Savage Fenty show? Of course I watched show? the Savage Fenty show. The, I understand Rihanna did a song for a soundtrack, but don't you think she could have released a bop for all of us as well? Isn't she, like, retired from music? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's been a million years, and then she came back with, granted, I think she should have done the soundtrack, but also give us, like, a Rihanna bop. I mean, I don't know. Did You, you didn't see it. That was, like, a movie. It was shot on a beach with a red camera. It was fine. I'm talking oh. about the show. The Savage Fenty show. Oh, I'm talking about her music video. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. You don't? No. 
<laughs> what do you mean? Oh, you, the, for no, the her, first time in forever, she re- released a single and she was promoting oh, it okay. like, I have a single coming. I have a single coming. And then it was a movie soundtrack, which great. I'm not knocking, but I just wish that while doing that, she would also make a song that's like a classic Rihanna song. Was what? that the song for Black Panther? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think the director like harassed her into making it, <laughs> is what I understood from an interview. Hmm. <laughs> Not actually harassed her. No, but, but like, yes, like <laughs> pressured her very hard to yeah. do it. And I understand artists doing that. I get it. But I also just like, if she's going to do it, like also give us a bop. <laughs> you know? I don't see the correlation. I do. She like her coming. Everyone has been asking her when she's coming back to music yeah. for a decade. Right. And then she teases her coming back to movie music. And it's like a, a whatever song, for song a movie. where she's just like going along. The beach. It, she looks got beautiful, it, got but it's yeah. just like you want more. <sighs> you want a more from Bad Girl. Uh, Riri. Yeah, I get it. She's but if you like, honestly, that Savage Fenty show like that woman has single handedly put to shame every fucking loser ass Victoria's Secret show that the ever Did you was. watch it? Yeah, and it and made me feel inspired and empowered and fucking like ugh. You watched the whole thing? I mean, I had it on while I was editing. <laughs> but it, it's sick. It's sickening. And like here. it kept drawing my attention. I was like, "Damn, this woman has really fucking done something here." And I want to take back what and I said. And that's what I want to feel about in my panties. I want to be like, ah! "Because you know I just I mean? told Selena Gomez, if music doesn't make you happy and you're miserable yeah, during and you're every like, point of the process, <laughs> hey Rihanna, if you're miserable making music and it's not fun for you and you love being a billionaire making clothing you know what good for you and you are doing great for the world thrive girl thrive you know what i take back everything i said riri i was always on your side riri just keep being you bad girl never forget lizzie was the one who had your back from the get-go and so what was this johnny depp appearance he just he walked the runway in like some... he was invited to actually yeah walk. he's just like walking so she's team johnny i think everybody's team johnny oh yeah the courts have ruled in his favor He's right. back, baby. <laughs> Isn't it crazy that that was the talk of the town for months and months and months, and I can't even remember any of the details anymore? That is a crazy thing about you. <laughs> that is definitely a crazy thing, specific to you craziness. Wild, right? It's crazy. Good for everyone that has But like... what is Mike's way? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never be able to tell you. Hey, Jersey Mike's, hot tip. Just put like a Mike's Way button on DoorDash, Postmate, Grubhub, anywhere you can order food. They do. No, they don't. They do. They don't. No, they do. I literally ordered it today and there wasn't a button. Yeah, there is. In the Jersey Mike's app, there okay. is. I don't know about Dort. <laughs> Who goes? You have the Jersey Mike's app? Yeah. yeah. You guys are nuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I prefer DoorDash because they're a big sponsor of our show. Okay. Brett. <laughs> What am I being brought? You need to blow DoorDash's. I blow you, DoorDash. <laughs> I actually use DoorDash all the time, though. For Are real. You, did you yeah. use our code? And I love it. No. Look it up in the description section below. Use it. Rylan doesn't like when I say that I used to use DoorDash to get cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lindsay Lohan's. You put Lindsay Logan's Christmas movie. I know. I'm not about to like fix that autocorrect. Okay, so tell me about it. Did you finish it? Did you kind go back? I, I didn't even I know. I was in was and out. out. Wow. I was in and out. I you was like, wow. Well, you, you know, you I and loved Shane, it. You guys are so. <laughs> no, 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 I loved it. You need to respect No, I hand. loved it. I'm so proud of her. After I'm inspired by her. Out. She seems like a normal person again. I planted the seed again. Yeah. She was off her rocker for <laughs> a good while I'm, there. It is nice to see that she is of like the mental state that yes. seems like she once. Always, I don't actually know. She just seemed faded. Like she seemed well. Maybe she was just on, on drugs. One. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And now, and to me, this seems like a coherent woman who is of sober mind and body. And she was recently married. I think yeah. she's really just found peace. Yeah. And, and fucking, I'm so happy for her. I planted the seed right once I found out it was available to Shane all day long. I was oh. like, the movie's out. We're gonna watch the movie tonight. Are you excited for a movie night? Every hour, I'd be like, "We're having a movie night." <laughs> I love you. And so I watched the whole thing. I enjoyed it. I thought it was really cute. I thought it was really it well was, done for a Christmas movie. Yeah, I mean, com- in comparison to a lot of those other like Hallmarky yeah. movies, it's definitely gonna live in the shadow of ours. Unfortunately, most of them will, <laughs> but it's still right up there. You know Not what I me mean? being like, I hate when people are so cocky about what they're <laughs> making. <laughs> <laughs> like just surprise them with how great it is <laughs> did you finish the script i'm so close i'm i've been ask fucking chris dude i was working in the car on the way here okay. i'm very busy <laughs> okay i'm happy for Lindsay. i'm glad it's out it's you know yeah i love her okay 
Mm, any of these other things that you want to talk about? I can't see them. No. Oh, what was this? The Facebook status and the Demilio's. Oh, Dixie and fucking Noah are officially done. Really? Yeah. That's Facebook a reality official. show I finished. Yeah. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Yeah, I, did. I always, I start we strong. We don't have a jacuzzi. I start strong with the like Kardashians every season. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do it. And then after four episodes, I never go back. Yeah. The D'Amelio's, I finished the whole thing. Well, it's because they come out with two at a time, which is nice. Mm -hmm. We never talked about this. What? Yeah, we did. Not the end of the D'Amelio is not on our show. Oh. We had a private conversation off camera. There's another thing Would where... you like to bring it to the sip? Well, yeah. What about... Did I say something bad? No, but neither of us felt good about that music video at the end of it. Well, here's the thing. Also, did was anyone talking about Charlie's music video at the end of... And that's... Even if it... Okay. Well, it wasn't amazing. And I say that because I feel like she was trying to kind of rip off Olivia Rodrigo's song. Can I say something that's deeply concerning for what? me? I honestly thought that Charlie's acting was going to be good. And then after seeing the music video, I think it's not the case. I feel like it's different, though, uh, acting in a movie versus a music video. Like, it's nonverbal. I think it's easier to act in a music video, though, because the music... For me, music makes me very emotional. Well, maybe her song didn't do that for her. I mean, she wrote it her fucking self. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like about her big feelings for a guy that doesn't have feelings for no, her. No, she said it wasn't in... She said... Did you not watch the show? Maybe. That it wasn't a, a storyline in her life. But she wrote the fucking song. Allegedly. Allegedly. It's from your fucking life. We, you know, I actually tell have... Tell me that's not about Little Hootie. From the little hook that... Or I don't know, music. From the little thing that they teased yeah. in every episode leading up to its release, I thought I was really going to like yeah. the song because I liked that little could, portion. Like, I couldn't even tell you a lyric from it right no, now. No, me either. And so many Dixie songs I could tell you lyrics from. Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, you are hard for Dixie. I'm a little hard for Dixie. <laughs> I think she uh, works really hard. <laughs> I think she works really hard and I love a good crazy bitch. Like I'm a, out of my fucking mind. <laughs> no, I think so too. I just think it's interesting. Even if the song isn't good, music is objective. Yeah. Um, I, uh, is that music subjective? is subjective? Yeah. Um, I, it just, another example of TikTok doesn't translate to other places no. because she's the biggest TikToker in the world. And the music video only had a million views in the first week. And I just thought, how is that possible? Yeah. Like, even if it's awful, like, wouldn't you think these hundreds of millions of people would at least be curious to see what's going on? Uh, literally a hundred million people. Over a hundred million people. Crazy. No, they're not. Not even a second glance from them. <laughs> not even a first glance from some of us. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so I, but I wanted to talk about how Dixie and, uh, Noah are officially done. And I was thinking about, do you remember the time on Facebook how when it's like, I'm officially done with my boyfriend now. Single status changed. I hope you know that means I mean business. I wouldn't know because I never got to that point because oh. I was gay and never got in a gay relationship. Oh, so you never even like had emotional trauma with a girl where you guys were like. Girls were always trying to make it official with me, but mm -hmm. things weren't clicking. Weird. On my end. Uh-huh. So it never happened. Wow. So I never got to do that like in a relationship on Facebook. Oh, are you in one now? Yeah. On, fa on Facebook? Oh, no. We don't Facebook. Oh. You Facebook? No, I don't. I thought you did. What? I thought you did. You think I'm over here on Facebook? I thought you were. Yeah. I feel what like do you, you mean? I feel like you told me you're on Facebook a few times. Why would we like, be talking cute. about Facebook? I just feel like sometimes you're like, well, I was on Facebook the other day. What? <laughs> I feel like I'm <laughs> are you am i the crazy? only people that i have on my facebook even if i were to scroll are people from high school yeah and i feel like that's something we were talking about hmm. am i wrong every once in a while i'll scroll to see what those people are doing see that's what you said <laughs> that's what you fucking said but post on facebook or like no. something on facebook or comment on he facebook never. over my dead body <laughs> how about you chris have you ever emotionally terrorized someone with your facebook relationship status uh, I don't think so. Just me? <laughs> I don't think. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Mute him. Are you in a relationship on Facebook? I'm not on Facebook. You aren't? No. Huh. Hmm. Chris, I know it's an hour into the show, but do you have anything to say? Oh, God. About anything or yeah. Facebook? I'm on. I have a Facebook. I barely ever use it ever. Wow. <laughs> That's <laughs> Black Panther made me cry. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Any other things you want to hit on before we say goodbye to everyone? I don't think so. I think we hit everything. Um, John we can come back to this. I mean, we've got three minutes left on the clock. Do you want to say anything? I don't know. <laughs> we'll come back next week. 
because we'll still be here. You're done talking? No. Are, are you? I don't know. Why are you putting this on me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for watching today's episode of The Sip. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, you know what we didn't talk about? What? My fucking goddaughter's birthday. Oh, go for it. You piece of shit. <laughs> thank God we saved it for the end. Oh, my God. Our first birthday parties for the baby or for the adults? Definitely the adults. That bitch will remember none of this, and she did not give a flying fuck That's about the zoo. That's what I'm... Really? Yeah, she was like, well, you guys, I don't care. It was this big, elaborate weekend. Yeah, we took, the, we took her to the zoo, and she's like, I don't fucking... And the mom, Haley went all out with, like, Haley the decorations. fucking hit what was it that called? shit out of the park. Wonderland. Wonderland. O-N-E. Derland. Yeah, that's yeah. very cute. It was very, very cute. Lizzie kept FaceTiming me, which, like, I genuinely missed them, but had I been at my phone when you FaceTimed me, hell no would I pick it up when I know you're at a party. Well, I was, like, alone at a party with a no, baby. No, you started texting me from somebody else's phone. Oh, yeah. That's, like... That's because I couldn't take pictures. That's like, why I was trying to FaceTime hey, because I couldn't take Lizzie, pictures. on Haley's sister's phone, here's pics. I'm like, I'm not going to respond to somebody else's phone. And she kept doing it with, like, commentary. I was like, stop. <laughs> it's okay. Ashley's a real one. She doesn't give a shit. I just, I don't know. When you go to events... I'll text you from my own phone next time, but I couldn't send pictures from my phone. So she's FaceTiming me and I know she's at a birthday party. I'm like, I don't like, you know, when somebody's, I only answer FaceTimes from, you don't even FaceTime me really. No, I don't. I was trying to show you the decor because it was so fucking cute, but I couldn't take pictures. Very invasive of one space to FaceTime them. Yeah, I agree with that. It's just like, you need but to be my like, mom or Shane. But it's like, there's a baby. There's a baby. Right. My mm-hmm. favorite comment on the Lily's vlog, Liz, Lily's birthday vlog, though, uh-huh. was, wow, that baby really holds up to the hype. <laughs> <laughs> she is the best baby she out there. She is the best baby. I'm so sad Haley won't be my surrogate. I know. Okay. Nope. That's the sip. Well, see you later, guys. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to follow us on social media we're at the sip official we're also on there personally lizzie has vlogs that go up every tuesday on her personal channel uh christopher over there has an instagram we'll put in the description section below he's also on the shane dawson podcast check I it out the shane dawson podcast. and yeah that's it we'll see you next oh, week oh and the third installment of shane series came out yesterday oh my gosh it Ch- did I, i'm so excited because that's tomorrow for me yeah i have something no, to live for the finale is quite honestly one of my favorite videos shane has ever made like the whole like last 12 minutes just pull at your heartstrings will make you cry it's like it really made my Grinch heart feel some things let me get the unlisted link so I can watch it tonight I don't want to not be able to say I have it it? what the fuck Shane it's on well you can okay we have six seconds oh my god we love you so much that's sip goodbye and that's the sip (gasps) it cut do you want to just get the the... no I think it's good that way this is a not a mess of a mess of a mess okay we'll do audio only and And that's that's the the sip. sip What if I get it on my camera? How many times do we have to say it to these poor people? And And that's that's the the sit. Ah! (laughs) Cutting. (laughs) 